Hello, hello everybody. everybody. Hello, guys. Hello, hello. And welcome all to Drunks and Dragons. Welcome one. Welcome all. Thank you all so much for joining us and being awesome and being here. My sound levels are glitching. All right. I am Dungeon Master Turkey. Y'all know it. I am your lovely Dungeon Master for tonight. That's right. Um, yeah, I'm Dungeon Master Turkey. Uh, fuck DM Turk. His reign will soon come to an end, one way or another. Yeah. Them and the whole fucking Sidequesters crew. Yes, yes indeed. And of course, I'm here with Connor and Fishy. What's up, guys? What's up? Not much. Just ready to play D and D. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm ready to roll some dice, uh, play some into the story, get into the Drunks and Dragons story. This is episode 11, you guys. Uh, we're doing about 18 or 20-ish episodes this here season. Um, so we're pretty dang close to getting towards our finale. Uh, so things about to start building up. Uh, cheers to beers. That's fucking right. That's fucking right. Yeah. I'm not. Everything's great. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. Happy Ghoul Couch, fuckheads. Happy. Our costumes are the best, we are the wicked, we never get a rest. The dice for the show and the story is average, but with the help of chat, there will be carnage. You never know what is gonna happen. A dragon, a kraken, assassin, imagine, but it doesn't matter, just roll for it. Holy shit, that is 20, critical hit! This is Drunks and Dragons, so fill up all your flagons. Hey! This is Drunks and Dragons, so prepare for some shenanigans. That was weird. I was gonna do it like an intro thing, but then everything just fucking glitched out. What the fuck? <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to the shit show! That's right! Welcome to the show where it's full costume comedy and it's on Twitch where the, everything's made up and the improv don't matter. And sometimes it actually does occasionally. I am Dungeon Master Turkey. That's right! Uh, so tonight, I'm gonna set the scene for us. Okay, it's gonna be a beautiful, wonderful scene. If I'll stop fucking glitching. Why does that just happen randomly? I hate it. I hate it. We continue tonight's story on the campus of Strongheart University in our lovely realm of Intoxica, in the central most place of Intoxica, in the center, the place called the heart of Intoxica. We start at Strongheart University, the magical, amazing college for all the mages and aspiring adventurers who want to become stronger and want to go off and adventure and save the whole world. Right? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get better. We're trying to go out and fucking save the world. You know what I mean? We start there. Last week, uh, you guys went and helped save Eddie, the donkey, to make him a part of your mage tower team. Today, when we start, tonight, the Mage Tower game commences. You guys have games to play and things to do. But before we can, first, you have an exam this morning. Now, before we get to that, you guys are studying for said exam. And we know how this works by now. It's a little bit of a, you kind of make it up and then we roll on it situation. You could tell me how or whom you are studying with, and if it's good enough, I may give you advantage on your save. Hmm. And I would like to remind everybody in chat that you are welcome to help these guys re-roll and give them pluses on their studying phase, but they cannot receive any chat help during the actual exam rolls. I'm corn. So, one at a time. How are y'all studying? Um, before we, uh, what are we studying? What are you studying like, for? Yeah. Like you are, are studying we... for interpreting wheels and woes and augury tools and methods to use them. Uh... <laughs> this is second semester, okay. baby. This is difficult shit. It is difficult shit. But as part of last week's episode, I had asked uh, Cherry to come over in the morning 
for fucking waffles oh, yeah. and that we were going to study together. So um, I'm going to start off my morning by taking a stroll over to the, the female's uh, dormitory and uh, to go pick up Well, you just said she house. was... She's already there. We don't need to do all the yeah. whole improv and walk oh, bullshit. She she's already, she's already fucking there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, so we're like eating waffles, and then uh, we're studying through the textbooks because she brought books because she likes books. I brought the waffles. She brought the books. She does like books. She okay. does like books. And you are playing with Cherry, so we remember a little bit of what Cherry looks like since it's been a fucking week. Um, I think we shall. God, I need a new computer. This is just off. Took me a little bit, but we here. This is Cherry. Okay. This is open. Doesn't need to be. Yes, this. Bye. Doesn't need to be open. That might help. Probably not. We'll see. All right, that is Cherry. So you like say anything to her while you're studying how does this go is it fancy dance uh, here well, yeah not really because like our house is really small and our Welcome kitchen's also really small to the small. nerd herd you dang nerd oh shit <sighs> maritime, All maritime gamer, gamer. TV. the grow 11 hype couch the grow 11 hype couch fucking cheers you nerds fucking cheers fucking you fucking nerd cheers. Thanks, buddy. For the 15 fucking Here. months. Thanks, Nate. Appreciate you, buddy. You rock. Mm -hmm. <sighs> fucking chairs, bud. We just started. Welcome on in. How was your day? How's things going? What's up, you live? I didn't say hi to chat today either. Man, I am off today. It's cool. All right. How does it go? Is it It good? goes, uh, so I'm very, uh, kind of like just distracted with her because she's got a little bit of syrup on her cheek and stuff but she's explaining to me about how to use the tools and the history of the tools and where they came from because they're important digging tools <laughs> they are not digging tools <laughs> but i like that you tried Nate said he played too much Overwatch. I think Spooky's playing right now. <laughs> Go play with her. Y'all can play together. Uh, uh, Malagala? That doesn't work. Okay, um, well, roll me. You must roll me. Or just straight up studying and remembering. You may roll me a wisdom check. Now, this is a difficult one and a DC 17. This is the final exam of this here's second semester. A wisdom check? Yes, sir. Okay. Tools. Yeah, yeah. I got tool. an 11. You fail. And I have no lessons to win. All right, keep it up. If chat wants to help you, they can. Ronk, yeah, how are you studying? Guys. You got it. Well, I've uh, come up with an ingenious device That's to help me learn the wheels and woes. So I've strapped myself to a wheel on the wall <laughs> and I'm spinning in circles. And I am certainly experiencing the wheels and woes. And what? I'm spinning. How? Wheels How are you doing do this? That? How are you doing that? <laughs> I can't even do that. How are you doing that? Oh, you're going to have to teach me. The it's wheels and amazing. woes. I'm learning. I'm All learning right. the wheels and woes. Because you brought... <laughs> fucking screen effects you can get advantage on this check go on ahead with your wheels and woes roll me an athletics check then if you're learning wheels and woes with a wheel okay wait no you're spinning wait no you're spinning upside down you're getting dizzy roll me a constitution check okay fucking awesome ronk yeah what the fuck to not puke it's a constitution check that's a 13. Ten. You can do it with advantage because you did the fun spinny thing. All right? I say advantage. That's an 18. You pass. No one is giving Felix pluses. I want to remind everybody in chat that if they succeed on this study phase, they get one reroll to take with them into the exam phase. One single reroll. Now, if they fail, 
the exam. They cannot work extracurriculars, which means they do not get extra gold and they do not get the extra D4s on bonuses throughout the rest of the, until the next exam, pretty much. They don't get it. And we're going into Mage Tower, so. But if they ace the exam, they get an extra D20 uh, uh, roll to add to anything, which is wonderful, or whatever it is. So, um, a, a, D, a, a D8. Yeah, you can't give a dice and give a dice. The anti. Well, yeah. it looks like we did. It did not go well. See, yeah. I totally plus two. I swear the tools well, were for digging. You plus got an eleven. Two. You got a thirteen. Plus uh, two. You got advantage oh, yeah. from God of War. You got a fifteen. Oh, that's a five. So I would have still taken the nine. The nine. Yeah. So you're still, still at fifteen. You need one more plus two if you're gonna make it. If chat wants to help, he needs one more. Or they just teasing. They're just teasing you. Yeah. Could just be that sounds about right. Yep. That's a big tease. They give you three pluses. They get you right there and then stop. Oh, sad face. Plus two. Ha ha ha, abstract it. All right. <laughs> I hate you. Plus two. Plus two. Plus two. Okay. Okay. Thanks, guys. All right. You succeed. You get to take with you the one reroll. Now, as you guys kind of wrap up things here at your dorm room with Cherry and the studying, you guys are going to be walking together over to the classroom. But before you do, you guys are kind of doing the dishes together and everything. And Eddie is also there because Eddie promised to help make these waffles. Because, of course, Eddie the donkey loves making waffles. It's one of his big old passions. And I would like to think that while he was cooking these Cheers, waffles, Rock, you kind of... To all the plus two love. That was hard to read for a second. Thanks, Debbie. Fucking cheers. Rock, I would like to think you were kind of judging Eddie on the way he cooked these waffles, being how much of an amazing secret chef that you think you are. How did Eddie do making these waffles? I'd say he did about average for uh, somebody's cooking with uh, tubes. Pretty difficult. I'd say it's uh, for someone with uh, the Hoovy Boys. You only got that one appendage. Say it's pretty good. Do you tell Eddie that? Or do you just silently... Oh, no, I keep it to myself. All right. Can't let the secret get out. Okay. All right. So, uh, he cleans up everything. He helps lick all the dishes clean. Um, and you guys escort him out and tell him where to meet you later on in the day, of course, for the Mage Ball game. As part of the deal of you setting him free, he's joining your team. But you guys together head over to class for your final exam this here semester. With, of course, Professor Buck Woodslobber. Let me see if I could change the background. This is going to be real rough tonight, boys. We're looking rough. All right. Rut row. We'll be fine. Welcome, everybody, to, of course, your homeroom sophomore class here. For some of you, this may be the last time that um, we get to see each other, being that this is your final. Now, today, we're going to be taking a test on augury tools and methods and interpreting wheels and woes that are resulted from them. Has everyone brought, of course, your utensils and things? Yes. Very well, Ron. Uh, I had them. Mmm, Mr. Fieldgum. I do, I do, I do. I don't I see do, you I doing really, very well. I, 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 I'm, I'm here, I swear. Okay. Now this first test is going to be on augury tools and methods. Choosing the most effective tool and methods for casting augury. Now if you would like a small example and explanation of what an augury is, everyone here in chat, because not only are we taking these tests this season of Drunks and Dragons, but we're learning things about the world of D&D. &D. Mm. 
By casting gym inlaid sticks, rolling dragon bones, or laying out ornate cards, or employing some other divining tool, you will receive an omen from an otherworldly entity about the results of a specific course of action that you plan to take within the next 30 minutes. Then the DM chooses the possible omens to reveal to you as to what they are. Wheel, woe, wheel and woe, or nothing. The spell doesn't take into account any possible circumstances that might change the outcome, such as the casting of additional spells or loss or gain of a companion. If the spell is cast two or more times before completing your next long rest, there is a cumulative 25% chance for each cast after the first that you will get a random reading, and the DM will keep this secret. Now, we know what an augury is. Fair? Fair. Fair. Now we will be taking a test on this today, so both of you will be rolling a history check. Okay. I would like to remind you that if either of your extracurriculars involve history, you may add a d4 to this roll. What's up, Yanto? Thank you for the 100 bits and the Taki Umi. Huh? Classic, classic things. Alright, you will be rolling a history check. You must beat a 17, just so everyone knows. This is a, an intelligence history check. And if either of your extracurriculars deal with history, you may add that D4. Wow. Mr. Fieldguard, seems that you are struggling to understand what an augury is. Give a dice. You can't give a dice hey. on the exam rolls abstracto, as stated before. But I appreciate your waste of currency. And it was also yes. for Ronk, anyways. So. Yes, yes, it was. Who um, do you think it was for? Do I, get a, roll? do I get a reroll because of the studying? You can reroll one time because of the studying. Now, as to remind everybody, if they pass one skill check, they pass this test. If they pass both, they ace the exam. If they pass the exam, they get an additional 1d6 to add to any roll of any kind throughout the course of the semester, once per day. If they ace it, they get two. So, would you like to use your reroll, Mr. Fielga? Uh, yes. God. It's not looking so hot. It's not, not looking it's really so not. hot. Yes. Didn't they study? No, Yanto, you weren't paying attention to the rules when I explained them the first time. All right. Moving on, Fieldgar, you have failed your first part of the test. The second part is interpreting wheels and woes, whether the results of your spell were to be good, bad, or good and bad, and the reasoning out of the meaningful interpretations of cryptic scenarios paired with the results of auguries. This requires a successful insight check of 17. No. <laughs> Damn oh. it! <laughs> I fucking failed! Seems to me oh, you were what? paying too much attention to a woman there, Mr. Fieldgar. You forgot to study. Yes, Grove. I would like to uh, use my reroll. Mm, very well. Ugh. Congratulations, uh, Wrong, for passing this exam. It was a difficult one. Next time, Mr. Fieldgar, study harder. And maybe... It was definitely hard while studying. You is, well... Hard wood does get me hard, being the beaver that I am. But study better next time, and maybe you'll do better. I wish you luck next semester. 
But I would like to remind you that now, moving forward, all of your extracurriculars are invalid until you pass your next exam, and you will be in tutoring instead, meaning you have no re uh, extra dice to put onto anything. And congratulations, Ronk, you have an extra 1d6 to add to any roll once per day. Student dice. Mmm. thought that was if I uh, ace the exam. You get two if you ace. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Now, Mr. Grove and Mr. Fieldgar, seems that we do have business on and off together outside of the classroom, so I'm hoping I will see you again. But for now, I have things to do. Yes. I would, um... Deck of Drunken Things, activate! Alright, Felix gonna get a card. Heck yeah. I would also like to say... That. This book that you two may have retrieved. Now, if you were to give the book to me for my own studies, I will raise both of your grades up one bar. Meaning, Felix, you will pass. Ronk, you will eighth. But only if you allow me to have this book. Well, seems as though we'd already fixed uh, Donkey. Mm. I mean, uh, fixed Eddie. No problem. That's good. So we don't really need the book anymore. Hmm. What do you think, Felix? I say 100% give him the book. Like, All right. did we even really read the book? You learn how to do the weird twisty thing while in second dimension, but that's a, that's a pretty cool feat even without the book. Yeah. Well, guys, we to the, the nerd herd, you dang give nerd. Give the book. Well, well we I damn so love chose me. this. Cheers. Cheers. Are you mistaken, like a toys? Y'all can do better than that. Fucking cheers, Moby. Thank you. Cheers. Shame on them. They were so like, wow, so cool. Thanks, Moby. 19 months, brother. Cheers. I was thrown off by the name. Oh, no. Reality. Reality Storm. Okay, so you're giving him the book? Yeah, I'm going to give him the book takes it in his tiny little beaver hands and sets it on the desk next to him. And he's like, mm, yes, well, thank you. I'm going to write down here, Mr. Fieldgar, that you passed and Ronk, you aced your exam. Congratulations. If anyone were to find out about this small transaction, I could lose a lot of credit, credit so just keep this between us, okay? Okay. You got okay. it. Okay. All right, so you're still in your extracurriculars. Congrats. You um, bribed your professor. Nice job, Runk. Nice job, Runk. Yeah. Now, moving on to the next bit. You two boys, leave your classroom feeling high. Yes. And you're going to get a card there, bud. Let me, let me, let me get it up here. A 26. A 26. Ah, dude. Poor Felix, Scalasia was sad about your losing of your thing. Tried to give you a card to make up for it, but I want to remind everybody, there's bad cards in there as well as good cards. Sometimes not always good. Sometimes bad, you know? That's right. Yeah, it's loading. It's loading. Say something while it loads. How y'all feeling about that test? How'd it go? Awful! Oh, what the fuck? Feeling pretty, pretty good. good. I rolled a one to start off with. Excellent. It's great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Ron's over here boasting about his good fucking grades and shit. Yeah, it's pretty good. Better than yours. Way better. I studied very yeah, hard but, for that test. Yeah, but you didn't have the wheel. You didn't have the wheels. Whoa. Well, yeah. see, I didn't know I knew I needed to know how to do the wheels in woes in order to do pass. the wheels. Well, so just remember that. Uh, you need to be able Gala. to do the wheels. wheels Gala, I haven't whoa. told him what the card is yet. How do you know that it's bad already? 
I don't know what it is. Wait, did you look it up? 26! It's Mr. Felix's birthday! Today is oh, Felix's no. birthday! What? You almost failed an exam on your birthday? This means you age up one year, and today is your fucking birthday. Congratulations! Can we get some happy birthdays to Felix in chat? Oh, no. It has made this canon that today is your birthday. Um, so you, apparently you have like, you know what I mean? An end of a semester kind of birthday. Whatever would be October-ish, you know? Talking Scorpio, okay. who knows? You know, congratulations. Happy birthday, Felix. Welcome to being one year older, my friend. Cheers, buddy. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Cheers. It's weird being 24. Isn't it? Yeah. Happy is it all downhill from, from here? That's right. It's all downhill from here, bud. What is that in cat ears? I was trying to think of that, and then I was going to look up something. I don't know what the life expect expectancy of a tabaxi is. I, I don't know either. Like, what, what if they die at, like, that? 26? Did you Somebody's your phone? trying to figure it Somebody's out. Somebody's phone didn't. I don't understand that. Doesn't fucking figure it out. Forty-eight. Oh, that was years. my phone. In cat years, that's dead. That's what that is. Yeah, your phone was trying to help you. All right. Um, now, Felix, after your test, you go around campus to promote the game and to get people on your side for the game to come Stay. as your fans. Give us a speech. All right. Fuck yeah. Um, first, I'm gonna explain this, and you can talk about what it's like being an old man. Um, you're going to be going around the campus. We're going to cut over to Ronk. Ronk's going to have a little bit of solo minute, but while we're doing that, you're going to be around campus promoting the Breakfast Club. Now, you're going to get advantage on a roll when we come back because you did put up flyers previously, so that's going to help you. But I would like you to think about how you're going to be promoting this thing, and then we're going to do a persuasion or a performance roll to see if you can actually accumulate some fans while we're doing a solo Ronk thing. But before we do... You got a crotch speech, boy. Yeah. To like being an old man in a school of young people. I wonder if this is how I Nate think feels. Reflecting. Yeah, yeah. I think with Nate's uh, reflecting. with all the, this is exactly how mayor not mayor time Nate feels hanging out with me and Turkey, us young folk, and Connor. Connor is actually really young, surprisingly. Live about a century. And it, mm. it feels it feels weird. It um you feel like you could do better, but you're still just gonna be the same old disappointment. So uh, we're just gonna keep trucking along and uh, try to have a positive vibe. That's right, buddy. That's fucking right. Um, it is okay. I am old too. I didn't- I meant like his character, Gal. Is your character old, Gal? Hmm. Alright. Now, we're cutting over to Ronk. Ronk, are you prepared? Cutting to me. God, cut. Cut, cut, cut. We're cutting over to you. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Now, uh, I didn't like that music for this. Here's what happened. You, Ronk, head across campus to the home ec room. Previously, last week, you were asked by one of the master chefs to meet him in the home ec room before the semester ends. You figured today was the best day to do that. So you're heading across campus over to talk to Jyrome, Jyom, Guyom, Guyom, the troll, the master chef right here on campus. Let me switch this. So you'll be looking at your character sheet, not feel it. Now, you head inside of this room, and as you do, oh, I got a video for this. Oh, yeah. What? Why does it look like that? It should look like that. Everything is freezing. I need a new computer, y'all. Y'all, y'all, is, we're, is, we're, we're, we're working it out. It's, um, it's having a real hard time. I don't know what it is. Uh, uh, work with me here. Come on. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Don't be doing that. Because I don't know if that's real or not. Ah! Uh, being the skeleton poking his head. At, wait, what? What are you talking about? What's happening now? There's nobody else in this room. My door's shut.
This happened with Felix, do you remember? I had this big dramatic moment, and then it was like... Yeah. Alright, here we go! While Felix is walking around campus doing his thing, you walk into this room. You enter inside. Standing behind a cooking station stands a very large looking troll. Blue skin, teeth coming out of his mouth. He looks a little something like this. If it'll fucking load. I thought I seen something. That was weird. Looks a little something like this. Kind of hard to see. It's kind of small for you. I'll make it larger. Here we go. He says to you. I want to do a deep voice, but I'm not going to. Welcome, Ronk. I am Guyom. I have been waiting for you. Please, grab an apron and join me over here at the cooking station. Okay. Over here, Runk. Uh, uh, okay. Not over there. Over not. No, that's that's the broom closet. Not at. Over here. Kitchen, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. Kitchen, yeah. cook station. Kitchen. Yeah. Not that lever, but this lever. Okay. Um, as you walk over, you can see he's prepping all different kinds of ingredients. He's like chopping up onions. He's uh, you know, looks like he's got some bread in the oven. He's prepping all different kinds of ingredients. My goodness, what is going on, computer? Figure it out. Okay. You stand behind the counter with him and see all of his knife work, and it's kind of impressive. And he looks over to you, and he says, So what drives you to cook, Ronk? What is it that makes you want to cook food? Well, uh... Delicious. Nothing, uh, nothing that makes you feel better than good food. And, uh, most of the food I've eaten at home doesn't taste too good. We're in the middle of the forest. We just find stuff on the ground, put it in our mouth. It's not fun. Not good. Mm. Mm. But the first time I ventured into a nearby village and got a sweet roll from the bakery, my God. Like I was a different person when I popped that thing in my mouth. It's great. Never forget that day. You know, that sounds like a good day. So as you can see here, I have prepped all different kinds of ingredients. Pretty much everything any one person would need to cook. Ronk, I may have something for you, but before I give it to you, I would like to put your cooking skills to the test. If you would please, for me, make your signature dish. Put yourself on a plate, Ronk. I don't think you want that. No, please, of course. Of course, of course. I do. I am a troll. I eat all different kinds of things. Okay. Yeah. Crispy Bangs, what's up? Now, uh, Ronk, if you want, you could take a second to think about it. Um, but I want you to tell us uh, what what you're making, um, at least what you're attempting to make, and what ingredients you might be using, and um, then we're gonna roll survival to see if it goes well and if you actually do it properly. Spinach puffs. What? Spinach puffs. Spinach. Gotta puffs. make the spinach puffs. Said put me on a plate. That's uh, it's all me. Spinach puffs. So you consider yourself a spinach puff? You're going to put yourself on that, uh, okay. Well, I have spinach here. I've got dough. I've got everything you might need. Do you put anything extra in there? What ingredients do you use? Oh, well, uh, I usually chop up a little bit of hard artichoke, put that in there, too. If you want to get a little more fancy with it, you could put dill, possibly parsley in there. A little bit of garlic, just a tiny, tiny bit. And while you're at it, go and throw some feta cheese in there as well. Yeah. Butter it up. Make sure when you're folding your dough, you create thin sheets and layer them on top of each other to get that flakiness just right. Oh, yeah. Whew. Make sure you solve correctly. A little bit of pepper on the inside with spinach helps with flavor. 
and then uh, pop them in the oven, and they're good to go. Sounds like you know what you're doing. Yeah. Okay, roll okay. me a survival check. Let's see if you perform well under pressure. Let's see if you make them properly for the master chef here on campus. Suni said, I am not here. I am a ghost. I caught the dead. You caught the dead? Who the hell is the dead, and why did you catch them? Oh, no. Mm. Spit buffs are burning. Now, I wanted to remind you, okay. you aced your test. So you have two D6s that you could use any time per day. Additionally, if any of your extracurriculars on your report card you with survival checks, you can use an extra D4. Um, but you got a reroll from Suni. So you're more than welcome. That's not fair, Suni. You're dead. Finish buffs. Come on. Work with me. All right. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to use one of my D6s. I okay. want this to be good. Perfect. All right. The ghost wills it. All right, Suni. All right, that's, uh, you said it's a survival? Yes, sir. That is a, uh, 23. You got a plus six to survival, dude? I do. I mean, you are a druid. Kind of he reaches over, bends down, and picks it up, takes a bite of it, and he's like, but first off, let's get things straight. It looks beautiful. You've done a good job. Secondly, it tastes wonderful. Uh, the spinach is good. The artichoke addition is wonderful. The garlic, the pepper, you did a good job. Now, you wouldn't think garlic and pepper would work well together, but somehow you made it work great. And I don't know if it was my preparation of ingredients or just you putting it all together that made this a fantastic dish. But I can say that you might need a little bit of improvement. But one thing I must say to you now, Ron. Food... Is what drives everyone, Ron. Food can be powerful. Food can be magical. Food can heal. It can even boost people. Or it can even be used to persuade one person into doing something for you. I can see that you have potential, Ron. And I am willing to teach you. You can come to me if you need anything. I will serve as your counselor coming up next year for your junior year starting now. Of this here at Strongheart. Now, I'm here to help guide you on your Kirking journey. But first, I would like you to take something. And I want you to use it well. And he hands you this large-looking wooden spoon. And then he begins to explain to you what the wooden spoon is. This wooden spoon is not any kind of ordinary wooden spoon. No! This is a rare wooden spoon that requires attunement. The inside of this magical spoon can heat up to any desired temperature when the chosen word is spoken to it. This magical spoon then deals 1d10 damage to anyone while it is hot. Whenever you cook or make your signature dish while using this spoon, it tastes twice as good as normal. And in addition, when your signature dish is eaten, it gives 2d4 temporary hit points to any person for one hour. Finally, when you're holding the spoon, if you throw your signature dish, allies can automatically use a reaction on their turn to eat it. Okay. A reaction on your turn to eat it. Yes. Magic spoon. Oi, chef. Chef Ronk on deck. Yeah. See Charles? Where is Charles? It's fucking weird. He's not where he should be. What the hell? Anyways. Please, use this spoon well, Ronk. It served me well when I was an apprentice, and it may serve you well. It could pull you out of a bind, it could help you make more tasty food, and it could even be used in a battle. Good luck. Mm. I will use it. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Chef. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> nice, I love that. Uh, I'm going to send you the stats for this here, Ronk. I'm going to put it into the Drunks and Dragons chat so you could read it yourself, because I know sometimes it's hard. To, it's easier to read things yourself. Um, additionally, the stats for this wooden spoon will be in TTRPGs and Discord chat. If anybody else wants to use this amazing fucking wooden spoon in one of their campaigns. Yeah, dude. So, um... Here we go. Now, is there anything you want to say to him? Anything you want to do in this area before you leave? 
No, I'm good. Just say thank you. Thank you, Chef, for the spoon. I will leave the kitchen promptly as to not crowd it for the cooking space that is needed. All right. Fuck yeah. Now, we return back on the quad with... Let me change, actually, this stuff before we do this. We're going to return back with Felix. Now, hopefully over this time, you've thought about how maybe you're promoting the Breakfast Club and the game for tonight to get as many fans to come and root for you as possible. Huh? I had I had a couple of different ideas. Um, I can't do flyers again, right? Because they've already done the flyers. Mm-mm. So this is Definitely more not. of like I need like a like a prep rally. I was thinking more prep rally. Okay. So can I like first start off by going? Is there any type of cheerleading squad here in Strongheart University? I don't know, Felix, is there? You tell me. I would like to think so, but it's definitely not made up of the cheerleaders you would think of. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they're yeah. a bunch of witches. Bunch <laughs> of witches. Okay. Okay, wrong. Just because you had one bad interaction with them doesn't make them all witches. They're all witches to me. Okay, just because they're girls and they witches. fling magic does not make them witches. Dumb witches. So, Ronk doesn't actually like the cheerleading squad. They're actually really rude to him. But super I need mean. to go to... Okay, yeah, I know they're super mean, but this is a really good time, and I need their help if we're going to get this uh, prep rally going. So, Paulo? Yeah. Abstracto's right. Witches be tripping. I can't do this without the witches. Wrong. Yeah, I'm not stopping you. I'm just saying. Witchers better have my money. They don't <laughs> owe you money. Not yet. I, I, I need to go to the witches cheerleading squad. And, okay. uh, it's the witches' right. cheerleading squad now. Okay. Yeah. Now, Damn. what kind of witches are they? Are we talking like classic, like long hair, big nose, fucking green skin looking witches? Ronk? Felix? Oh, it's on me to decide? Both of you well. guys? What are we talking? Yeah, I would like for you guys to help create this world a little bit too. What do you think? Well, uh, yeah, green skin, big knobby noses, pointy ears. Uh, they got the hats, but uh, ironically, they're all in mini skirts and thongs. Big, uh, big prestidigitated uh, boobies, too. I don't think that's how you use that word. Yeah. And the, the male cheerleader, uh, cheerleaders? Prest- prestidigitation is a spell. Yeah, and yeah, they're they're just... Uh, they're just making it look like they have big boobies, but uh, I've seen faster magic before. And the male cheerleaders? The male cheerleaders are, uh, ironically, like- black male tabaxi. They're all tabaxis with black fur. With black fur, yellow eyes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, because they're cats. All right, I get it. I get God it. God damn. A bunch of Salem's, I tell you. Yep. I heard your brother was trying out for the... <laughs> no, I heard he actually made the fucking team, and I strongly regret my decisions now. But the, here we are. I'm going to try and do this without giving Helix uh, an opportunity to fail me. Okay. Does this work? Kind of. Um, <clears throat> and they're totally <laughs> like no, no, oh, no, no. Felix. They're Valley Girl. Deck of they're Ronk Valley Ronk. Girl. Oh. Activate. Um, Jesus, Ronk, roll me one d one hundred. Um, hello, Felix. What are you doing here? Uh, what's up, you guys? You guys know what day it is, right? Uh, A lot of school spirit. It's Mage Tower Day. Oh, is that today? Yeah, uh, it was today. Okay. 
What does that have to do with you? Why are you even here? We know we don't like well, orange cats like you. I know you guys don't, but I need your guys' help today. And I can totally, like, make it Are you it mocking me? Wild. No, I'm just like speaking that? a language that you can understand. Oh my... God, this card would have been perfect fucking ten minutes ago. Who did this? Damn it, Gala, you should have did this ten minutes ago. 29 is the Ramsey. You must talk like Gordon Ramsey for the next 1d4 minutes. And you get bonus points if you review something as if it was a failing restaurant. Fuck! <laughs> Nope. Uh, <laughs> roll me one d four. No fucking enough time. All right. No, no time. Okay, Spoken so roll. we're going to the prep rally. Is that what you're saying? We'll go for yeah. Helix because Helix is on the other team, so we'll go for him. Fine. Well, I just need you guys to get the whole student body inside the quad, and then just get everybody in spirit. Okay, sounds good. All right. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. It's fucking I'll meet you in the quad in like 20 minutes. Why does my nose go straight down? That's so weird. Uh, right down to the um, ground. You're an idiot. Okay. Sandwich. Uh, Fuck she all. turns around and starts um, gathering up all the witches and things. They grab their cheerleader pom poms and all their kinds of stuff and head out to the quad. Okay. Mm hmm. So, how are you performing? What are you doing? So, as uh, as as the cheerleaders are cheering on, and we're gathering everybody inside the quad, um, breakfast club uh, flyers everywhere, and uh, there's like uh, there's like the fountain that's in the middle, and uh, I'm a, I'm gonna climb up on. Well, I probably shouldn't climb. I'm gonna climb up on it anyway. Okay. And wait for everybody to like come in and then be like, who's ready for a mage tower? Nice. Uh, I'm gonna stand you go up at the top. <sighs> and then all the people are kind of just like, <clears throat> and then the cheerleaders oh, okay. start, they start cheering and they're like, Helix, Helix, he's our man. If he can do it, nobody can. And then your brother walks in and the whole crowd goes, <gasps> And he gets up on stage and he's like, who's ready for Mage Tower? And the whole crowd's like, ah. Oh, this is, this is hurtful. Um. Boy. God. You fucking donut. Look at me. We're going to do this. We're going to do fucking right this time. You understand me? You're going to walk out there. You're going to be a fucking man about it. Yes, chef. <laughs> Get out of my face! Leave! Do your fucking job! Do it! Okay. Who wants to watch Helix get crushed at Mage Tower? Alright, roll me a performance. Let's see if they receive your thing well. I'm leaving it up to the dice. Leaving it up to the dice. You're a fucking idiot sandwich. What are you? Uh, that's going to be an 18. Oh. Crowd's like, yeah! And then your brother's like, no! Who's ready to see Felix get crushed at Maid Tower? And the other yeah, half of the crowd's like, does. yeah! Oh, damn it. And then the third time. But Felix, right? It's like, yeah, uh, he said the same thing oh. twice in a row. Oh, jeez. You look over and you can kind of see the crowd splitting. Half of them are wearing like blue colors and the other half are wearing yellow colors. And you can see the yellow colors kind of have like breakfast club scribbled on them in marker. But the blue colors have like fantastic looking merch that's like amazing. And it has like all these crazy wild sponsor designs on them. Like oh, what? They got clean your sponsors? teeth. Yeah, uh, clean tooth. The other one's like electrolytes, light. As like a sponsor, and then you know, there's another one that's like fucking beans and chowder, you know, uh, on the like sides of them, yeah. Beans and fucking chowder, yeah. beans and fucking chowder. Do you think this is a fucking joke? 
Beans and chowder. Hmm? Who has the company? <laughs> yes, chef. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> donut. Yeah, you're a fucking donut. All right, um, one more chance to inspire everybody, Felix. The crowd's kind of gotten to a low rumble. Uh, I bet all of you, every single one of you in the crowd tonight, that you will have the most exciting time you've ever had at a Mage Tower game in your entire life. And I would like to use Persuasion. All right, get it. It's a plus you want a donut? Five. With bacon. God, what the fuck like, are yeah, these yeah, ice yeah, balls yeah, yeah. tonight? Let's get out of here. Um... So the whole crowd kind of disperses. You could see some of them heading towards the stadium and some of them not. Your brother flashes you an eye before he hops down off the fountain and leaves with his side of the crowd. You and Ronk kind of look at each other and you know what you have to do now. Dawn is upon us and it's time for the Mage Tower game. And when we get back in 10 minutes, we're going to see maybe how Mage Tower works and what the fuck is up with that. But before we go, we're gonna do some fucking thumbnail poses. My face is green. Yeah, why are you all so squished? Oh, it's because Trash Cam was going to be here. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, she... What the fuck? Can we could just get a uh -oh. video of Ronk doing the wheels and woes? <laughs> a gif, you mean? I guess. Yeah. I feel like it could be useful in other places. I wish I could have that as a sticker on my phone, and I would put it everywhere. <laughs> Uh, wait. I think there might be a better way to do this. Yeah? Mm. There we are. Now you can crop <laughs> just my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Fuck. I fucked it up. Oh, no. Come back. I love you. All right. The wheels and woes, everybody. Get ready to record. The wheels and woes. The wheels and woes of rock. It goes round and round. And wheels and woes. Wheels and woes of rock. Go round and round. Nice, dude. I recorded it there too. Fuck yeah. Just your head. That's what she said. There we go. All right, we're going to be right back in 10 minutes, everybody. Don't go anywhere. Currently sipping on Japanese pumpkin pottage. Pottage? Potage. Porridge? I'm assuming it's porridge. That sounds fire. Soon. Yeah, Fuck it's... yeah, brother. Porridge. Yeah. Is that porridge? Pottage? Pot age. Yeah, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Pottage. Porridge. It's fucking pottage. Pot it's canon now. Pot age. Game Couch Entertainment. Ah! Oh! Uh, Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Even that is laggy as fuck. Yo, my computer's dying on me, everybody. I'm gonna upgrade it one day. It's gonna be wonderful. Thank you all so much for joining here and being here and being fucking awesome. Uh, we are very excited to be here and be doing this and be playing uh, Drunks and Dragons. We love playing D&D, so we're happy to be here. This is episode 11. We only have a few more episodes left here this season. Just a couple few weeks. We're gonna be going 18 to 20 episodes, so we're halfway through, everybody. It's gonna be fun. So you're going to hear us talking a little bit about next season ideas because we're going big. And we're going the fuck home next season. We're very excited. So thank you all so much. Fucking cheers. I'm drinking random beers today. I don't know if you've seen earlier. I opened up a Paps. That's what I had in the fridge. Now I'm opening a Rolling Rock because it's also what I have in the fridge. It's just random. Cheers, everybody. Rolling Welcome back. back. You welcome you back, Abstracto. Welcome your Harry back. Welcome. Welcome back, Harry. Cheers, everybody. Bless <laughs> you. Thank you. Oh, will you play? Thank you all. Cheers, everybody. Yeah. <sighs> Welcome back. I'm Dad. So I'm Dungeon Master Turkey. That there is Connor and Fishy. You guys know that. We're here to play some fucking D&D. This is our strict saving campaign. Very excited. And uh, one of these guys are going to do the recap. A little bit of what the fuck happened. And I think Ronk should actually do it. Because you had the most things happen um, before we went Dad to break. gifted you so, a magical item. Felix for his two years. Uh, two years alcohol free. 
Um, magical item. Here we go. Here we go. Gonna make sure there isn't old ones in there. Like the potatoes and the socks. We've already drawn those. All right. I'm gonna shuffle this while Ronk does the recap. Thank you, Suni. All right. So, took our exams. I passed. Felix failed. But then uh, Professor Woodslobber gave us the opportunity to up our grade by one whole level. If I gave him the book that we used to free Eddie of his curse. So of course it did that and upgraded to an ace while Felix passed. After that, I went over to the head, uh, home ec room to talk with the troll that summoned me there. Guy owns. It was pretty cool. Head chef. Yeah. Uh, he had Charles. me... Sh uh, he made me show him what I had. He told me to show me what you got. So I showed him. And I put myself on the plate, which was spinach puffs, my signature dish. I made him. He liked him. Then he yeah. gave me a spoon. Really cool spoon. It's going to help me cook a lot more in the future. I think I'm going to try and figure out a way to attach it to my staff, too. Maybe. We'll see. Huh? But, but, we have Mage Tower to play. So just now, we summoned everybody to the quad. Talk to everybody in the quad. Try to get them pepped up for this, uh, this game that we're going to play. We have some people on our side, but those assholes over there also have some people on theirs. Yes. The crowd split into two. I thought there was going to be a mosh pit. Unfortunately, there was not. Everybody just left, and now we're stuck with a crowd of people waiting for us to do something. True. Well, they left as well. They left as well. Oh, but, never mind. Everybody um, left. They don't care. Since you guys both passed your exams, you also both leveled up um, currently before we go into Mage Tower. So if you guys would like to explain to everybody maybe a little bit of what you got, if you got anything good during your level up, being level sixes now... Anything new and special that you might be using or anything like that? What do you got? I have advantage against plants that are magically created or manipulated to impede movement. So no right. longer will plants uh, stab me with their thorny thorns or their spiny spines. I have ah. uh, immunity to that now. And also I have advantage against anything that's uh, magical plants trying to impede my movement. For, for example, entangle. I can't be entangled. Hmm. Shiny sixes. I don't know what that means, Virtue, but I'll take your word for it. Shiny sixes. You get anything good, Felix? Uh, I was still um trying to figure out exactly what type of school I should go into, and oh, I level feel level like six. you got it, Virtue. Maybe Blade Singer, Sassine Singer. No idea. Uh, I figured you had done it already. I thought I did too, but I... I uh... There's so many different options for level 2 wizard. Because I've been doing all my studying and, and magics and stuff. Booming Blade, Suni says. Blade Singer has Booming Blade. Um, we can continue forward, and then I'll, I'll figure out exactly what I want. All right. Sounds good to me, bruv. All right. Here we go. Moving on. Moving on. Moving left. Moving up. Moving on. Now, one more thing you guys must decide as you are walking towards the stadium. The crowd far ahead of you. You two walking together slowly. Being the two team leads of the Breakfast Club, Eddie and, uh, of course, Big Kim, if you would like, will still join you guys. But you must choose what mascot you will be playing with as a part of your mascot uh, during the Mage Tower game. Your choices are the Air Elemental, the Fractal, the Inkling, the Pest, or the Spirit Statue. I'm a pumpkin! Uh, if it helps at all, uh, uh, 
The Art Elemental is from Prismari, the Fractal is from Quandrix, the Inkling is from Silverquill, and the Pest is from Witherbloom, and the Spirit Statue is from Lorehold. Those are the mascots you have to choose from. And you must choose together, together, together. Uh, I feel like, and wrong, uh, if I'm not overstepping here, is um, we should take whatever Rosalie's schools mascot is as a show, as a show, as a show of spirit of uh, Rosalie. You're talking the about the worm. The uh, little yeah, worm the, guy. Sure. The, the little worms. Mm, the pest, then you say. All right, but first, Sunni's weapon that he gifted to you on this fine, lovely day, the two-year celebration. The super fuzzy, can't even fucking read it because the camera flicking sucks ass and my computer is slow as dick fucking repair is what it looks like. But you know what? Who knows? Let's see if we can get her to focus. Mm, 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 mm. There we go. All right. The Oriboros re repair. Oriboros. Very rare. Requires attunement. Oriboros Repair. You gain a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls you make with this magic weapon. Whenever you roll on, whenever you roll an eight on the damage die for an attack made with this weapon, the target of the attack takes an extra 1d8 poison damage. In addition, when you roll a 20 on the attack roll with this weapon against a creature, that creature must make a save, con 15. On a failed save, the creature takes 3d6 poison damage and is poisoned. On a success, the poison damage is halved and the creature is not poisoned. It's a poison repair, man. That's cool. That's what she is. All right. <clears throat> and you guys choose the pest. Um, for everybody who does not know at home what the pest looks like from Strixhaven, it is the Wither Bloom Campus mascot. They're little tiny purple little worm guys. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. It's running a little faster, but it's still a little slow. I don't know what I did differently. Look like that. Pest mascot. Little, little purple guy. Little, little purple little worm guy. Yeah. Fair? All is fair and love more fair. All right. Now. <clears throat> The last day of the term has finally arrived, and it's time for you to crush your opponents at Mage Tower or face ignominious defeat. Big words. You've prepared pretty much all semester for this. The battle of strong heart is upon you. So you gather your gear, you hype it up. And you head towards Strongheart Stadium to show everyone what you are made of. Getting to Strongheart Stadium, you head straight into the locker room. Of course, with your chosen mascot that you have chosen. One of you is holding the pest. To prepare for the game. Getting inside, both of you approach your lockers. And Eddie and Professor Hooters, the Owlin Professor, are already there waiting for you. The locker room's okay. It's got wooden lockers lined all about, a small little fire in the corner along with a table that people can sit at to relax in between matches. Eddie is eating all of the hay in his locker. You two approach your lockers and stand there. You can see inside your locker ronk some things that you have left from previous practices, along with Felix, you have some things that you have left inside of there. And you can see, um, Big Kim Slade, I couldn't think of her name. Big Kim Slade from Big Kim Slade Gaming, talking to Professor Hooter. And the professor welcomes you as you walk in. He's like, hoo-hoo, hello, hoo-hoo. I would, uh, like to thank you guys again for helping round up all the mascots for me, uh, uh, as you already know, I'm officiating the game today. I was tasked with putting this together. So I'd like to ask both of you to keep it clean. And I would like to remind you that each of the winners on each team are going to be receiving 400 gold pieces 
a piece if their team wins today. So good luck to you, my friends. I would also like to tell you that I'm a skull. Uh, <clears throat> I, would, I would also like to tell you guys that the teams must be even. You can go in with a team of five, a team of four, or a team of three, and the other team will be reflected. Since you guys helped me, I will totally do whatever numbers you feel. I see you have two friends here. You can go in with four, or you can go in with three, and the other team will reflect those numbers. So just let me know what you're thinking. Well, it's, uh, it's me. Yeah, four, Big Kim. Yeah. yeah. Let's do four. Okay. I'm down with that. Yeah. All right. So I would like both of you to prepare yourselves. Talk amongst your team. The game will be starting soon. Okay. The other team is already in the other locker room kind of preparing. I'm going to let them know that it's four people. So I don't know who they're going to decide to play with. But, um, of course, you're playing against Jace, uh, Helix, Carmen San Diego and Songbird. So I uh, wish you luck today. Mm. And then she walks out of the room. The Allen Professor does. You two wander over to a table where Eddie and Big Kim are already sitting. Now is kind of like your final time to take a long rest to get HP back, to switch around any spells you may have if you have the ability to do so, or to prep and cook some food if you would like to use that. Um, because after you head out to the field, you won't have any time to do any of those things. Of course, you could also talk plans or whatever with your team. And I know you don't know all the rules yet about the game, but I will tell you, you can cast magic. We're going to be doing skill checks and taking small actions um, on the field. And I'll explain all the rules once we get there. Yeah. So I did get a fun new thing, becoming a level two wizard and the school of divination. Uh, one of my feats is is when you finish a long rest, roll two d20s and record those rolled numbers. You can replace any attack roll, saving throw, or ability check made by you or a creature that you could see within sights uh, with one of these four telling rolls. You must choose to do so before the roll, and you can replace a roll in this way uh, once per turn. Each roll can only be used once. Nice. Okay. Well, you're taking a short rest now, but at the beginning of games, whenever we do our long rest, please remind me and I'll let you roll them. That's pretty sick. Hell yeah. Ronk, do you want to do anything during this no. short rest? I'm good no? to go. All right. No food prepping, no switching. <clears throat> All right. Eddie's there as well. Uh, that's not Eddie. It's not new. Hey, guys. Uh, well, I'm excited to do this match. Um, I, uh, I know one spell that can make me fly. I'm a flying, talking donkey, of course. That's the only one I know, but I can run and I can ram. You just tell me what you want me to do. Got it. Yeah. All right. Uh, and uh, Big Kim's there as well. Um, whenever we get into the match, you guys are going to have to decide. I want both of you to be controlling, um, with your roles, one of those characters. I'm assuming Ronk's going to take Eddie. So that means Felix. You can take Big Kim. Now, Big Kim... Knows a couple of first level spells um, and a couple of cantrips of things. Nothing really special. I don't have it actually written out. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to send you the student sheet. All right. Um, for her. Because she is a student. Mm hmm. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. It's all, it's all breaking. Yeah. Yeah. It's all breaking, everybody. Don't worry about it. Um, Porton is great. I had a player use it to gamble. I already read that, but I don't think I processed it. That's pretty cool. That's actually a really cool skill. So it's 
you roll two dice after every long rest? Yeah. Nice. And then I can choose for me to just take one of those dice before I roll a dice. Or yeah. before a creature within sight rolls, I could be like, nah, it can take this like two I have over here. Be like, fuck that. Nice. You just like, all right, you're getting a nat one on that attack, bitch. Nice. What if you roll nat 20s for both of those rolls? Then I save those for myself. Ah, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. You could do that. Nice. At least with the emotes. Yeah. Okay. I've got it up here. Um, I'll just bring it up whenever it's their turn. All right. Any final things before we head out to the field? No, uh, no. Let's do remember, it. Remember, guys, that guys are real team excited is not important. What's very important is just sheer winning. Okay? So if you see an opportunity to either help a teammate or go for the win, always go for the win. Okay. Will do. Right, Runk? Right. <laughs> All right. You guys Wrong step out board. of the locker room into the stadium. The stadium, Strongheart Stadium, is enormous. The circular... Excuse me. The circular stone... In grass, bright green field is covered in small little hills and rocks and broken columns. And 40-foot towers rise up at either end of the field. There's one on each side. The surrounding bleachers stretch 50 feet up into the air. Five spires each fly the flag of the Strongheart Colleges. And a sixth flyer... A sixth flag flies a banner displaying the strong heart star, the logo of the college. As you guys walk out to the field, and I'll show you a little bit here. We have maps, bitches. As you guys walk out to the field, um, all right, so Trash Can's head is now being represented by Eddie the Donkey. Um, as we, you walk out to the field, you stand in front of your column. And in the center sits Professor Hooters. Who calls out? And her voice overwhelms all conversation, flooding into the locker rooms, flooding out everywhere. Her voice is being heard, and it echoes throughout the whole stadium. Do I have an echo effect there? I don't think I do. I have cave. Students and teachers, staff and friends, Welcome to the Battle of Strongheart University. Today, two teams of Strixhaven's finest and Strongheart's finest will battle for the right to call themselves champions. They've practiced, and you've waited. Now, let the game begin! <laughs> Um, once the announcement ends, both teams meet Professor Hooters at the center of the field. The professor snags the mascot from you, Felix, flies it to the southern end of the field, the tower you were just standing next to, and places it atop. Then she grabs the other mascot. The other team chose... I didn't pick yet because I don't know what y'all were going to pick. The Inkling. They picked the Inkling. She grabs it and flies it over and sets it atop of the other tower. Then she flies back and stands between you, returning to the center of the field. She reminds both of you, both teams, that magic is allowed here during the game, but you are not allowed to harm other participants, the mascots themselves, the audience, or the facility itself. You cannot harm it or deal damage. And she says, you already know the name of the game is to capture the opponent's mascot from their tower and then bring it back to your side of the field and place it on your tower to score a point. First one to do so ends the round. This is going to be running over three rounds. The field here is difficult terrain and it halves your movement speed from all of the rocks, columns, the thick grass and the weird strange hills. 
However, movement, flying, and hovering spells are allowed to be used here. The game takes place over three 20-minute phases. In each phase, you will be casting magic or making skill checks against the opposing team. Any questions? Say pretty straightforward. Just like practice. Just like the simulations. I've seen a ghost behind you say, so what? A ghost? Where? What are you talking about? There's a ghost? That's weird. I don't see anything. Seems normal to me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Funny stuff. All right. Why is the music so low? Here we go. So low. So, without any questions, I'm going to fly over there and blow the whistle. Then we will begin. She flies up. You three, you four, look straight across. And across from you, you see Jace. You see your brother, Songbird. And of course, Carmen San Diego. You stare across from each other, staring, making hard eye contact. Your brother's like, Hey, Felix, I wish there was a dumpster on the field so I could leave you in it. You won't be saying that when I take your other eye, brother. Then Jace is like, Hey, Felix. I'm going to show you up today and make sure that you shit your pants. Hey, Jace. Fuck you, Jace. And then Carmen's like, Hey, Felix. I'm going to make sure that you rule the day. I plan to rule someday, and it's glad to have somebody rooting on my team. I have made a lot of enemies here, haven't I, Ron? Yeah, can I just wave and be like, Hey, guys. And, and then like, Songbird's like, Oh, hey. Hey, Ronk. How's it going? It's good to see you. Happy that you're here, man. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Have a good game. Yeah. It's a good game! All right. Um, she flies over and blows her whistle. Beep! The whole game starts off. The opponents all gather themselves quickly and begin running towards you to run towards your side of the field to get your tower. This is phase one. If you have an idea to cast a spell, you are more than welcome to do so using magic. All right. Instead of making an ability check, you can cast a spell. All right. And uh, normally, the level of that spell determines the benefit unless you're using it in a creative way. We could just do it straightforward. You can cast a first or second level spell to give another team member of your choice advantage on their ability check or vice versa to give someone disadvantage. Right. Um, three or higher, you can cast a third level spell to just straight up count is it a successful ability check just for just for winning a, an ability check. So, here's phase 1. Each participant must make a DC 16 dexterity acrobatics check to dash past opposing team members and get past them to their side of the field to get their mascot. I'm going to cast a spell. Okay. What are you casting? Uh, and tangle on the other team. Ooh. Plus two. Right. Plus two to Runk, but he's not even rolling now. <laughs> All right, um, we got four players. We got four players. Let me get my D twenties here. Got to yeah. beat uh, uh, 14th strength save. Well, the. The way we're going to do this is we're just going to count that as a way to put them all at disadvantage. What is the range of Entangle? How much does it take up? Uh, the, well, the range is 90 feet, and the area is area. 20 feet. 20 feet. Okay, so you're going to hit one of them. You're going to put one of them at disadvantage. Who do you want to put at disadvantage? I think it should be uh, Helix. Helix. Okay. It seems like the what, acrobatic guy. What level of a spell is this? Is this a cantrip? This is a first uh, first level spell. First level. Okay. Uh, so you're using it to get... Alright. Sounds like a good plan, Stan. Now, uh, Felix, anything you want to do before I roll for all of them? Yes. I would like to cast uh, Cause Fear at a second level spell slot. Which... Okay. Um, 
You awaken the sense of mortality in one creature you can see within range. Uh, construct and undead are immune. The target must succeed on a 16 wisdom saving throw or be frightened and uh, repeat the saving throw and at the end of each of its turns. And then, yeah, it's frightened. But casting okay. it at a second level spell slot allows me to do two targets instead of one. All right. So you're going to give two of them disadvantage, basically. So if they do yeah. fail this, they might move back a little bit instead of moving forward, right? Um, that's kind of right. the way we're going to do the spells and things. Advantage or disadvantage, but you're doing it in fun, creative ways. Because if we do actual effects of spells, then I have to do spells for all of them, and then this could just get fucking wild. And we're already kind of doing it differently than the book does itself, um, but I think it's more fun this way. So, that's what we're doing. So, three of them are getting disadvantaged. Both of you still need to roll for Big Kim and for uh, Eddie the Donkey. Now, you can take that plus two from Debbie for Eddie the Donkey, Ron. Uh, this is a uh, acrobatics check. Yes. Uh, yeah. Where's the character sheet at? I didn't send it yet. I was like, all I see is spoon in here. There's, there's only a spoon in here. There's only turkey. There's only a spoon in here. There's only a fucking spoon. What you doing with that fucking spoon? There you go. You've got it now. Um, Eddie the Donkey no. has pretty similar stats to that as well, except he can cast Levitate on himself. Um, and uh, I'm thinking Eddie the Donkey has like a plus three to dexterity saves, any kind of acrobatics thing. Yeah. Uh, Why'd you roll two dice eight. there, Ronk? Because you said roll one for Eddie. Yes, but since you casted a spell, you don't also get to do acrobatics. It's kind of like one or the other, I think. Oh, well, 12 was the first one. Okay. And uh, right. Big Big Kim got us eight. And that's actually going to be a 14? Yes. For it. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he's going to have a plus three to this, plus the plus two, so that makes it a 17, so he succeeds. And then Big Kim got a, what'd you say, nine, eight? She fails. Big Kim fails. She just, uh -huh. Dang it, Big Kim Slade from Big Kim Slade Gaming. Sad. Mm hmm. Now, for all three of our opponents. Oh, Jesus, that was a 16. Jace got a 16, which succeeds. At disadvantage, Helix got an 11 or a 10. That's a 10. He fails. Uh, Carmen got a 5. At disadvantage or an 11. That's a 5. He fails. Last Plus one, Songbird. Three. Songbird got an 18. Or a natural 20. So Songbird succeeds. Songbird and Jace rush past both of you. As Eddie and Big Kim take off the other way. Big Kim's having a hard time moving. She kind of like slips and falls. She's got an 11. She had to beat a 16. Even with your plus two, Odie. She's having a hard time. Now, we require a second skill check in this phase of an insight check to anticipate the opponent's tactical ploys against you as Jace and Songbird come rushing towards one way from both of you. And your two teammates hey. rush out past the other two. We'll try to get a 15. Nice. You're rolling two dice also. Remember, for Big Kim and for yourself. I got 15. That's a 15 for me as well. Big Kim Slade from Big Kim Slade Gaming got a 19. Oh, Eddie's nice. not doing too good. To start writing all this shit down. Why is my pen not working? Dang it, Eddie. Well, he's not very smart. He's not. He's not a smart lad. Okay, and I want to double check. Inst yeah, it says instead of making an ability check, you can cast a spell. Yeah, so I was right. All right. Breakfast Club versus um brunch. All right. Uh, Eddie passed his skill check. You guys both cast two spells, and then we got one fail. Right, now, we've got three... Two successes. Ronk, you fail as well with your 12. You got bonuses to insight? Yeah, I had a, I had a plus three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry to say it, my friend, but that still fails. Wow. Yeah. So 15 fails? Yes, sir. 
Oh, shit. Yeah. Yes, it does. All right, now for the other team. We got a three on Jace. He fails on learning your ploys. We got a seven for Helix. He fails. We've got a four for Carmen. He fails. <laughs> We've got a 16 for Songbird. Congrats, Songbird. God damn, Songbird is killing it. Yeah. Now. That was the loudest fucking. <laughs> that is the loudest fucking thing, dude. Jeez. All right. Um, I would like to refer to the map a little bit. It really doesn't have squares or like anything kind of to like um, signify anything. But I think I'm going to add another star in here just so we can kind of know who Big Kim is and know who, because they have four people as well. I kind of want to keep a little bit of a basis here. The book itself, just so everyone watching along, just so you know, it doesn't really suggest that you do maps or anything like that. It's really kind of like rules light. There really isn't a lot going along with it, um, really, like at all. So this is Dim. That is you. This is where we started. All right. Now, uh, what happened first round? Let's see, you guys cast spells, yeah? Um, Eddie rushed forward to try and get the thing, um, and Big Kim tried and failed. She only made it a little ways. Then you guys did a wisdom check to anticipate the opponent team tactical ploys. What the fuck does that mean? I don't know. I have no idea. But here we are. This doesn't make any sense. I hate this. I read through this earlier and I was like, mm, maybe it'll make sense when we start once we start playing, but it really hasn't. Oh, jeez. All right, well, we're moving on to phase two. Each participant must make a DC 16 Arcana check to not be faked out by the opposing team spells or mock spells. And yes, so we're doing another check. It says at the bottom here, the team with the highest total of successful ability checks wins the Battle of Strixhaven. And I am keeping a list here. So we know how many out of all the checks were successful. Oh, I failed. And I think I think Big Wrong Kim Slay got like. Hold on, Can I use my other D six I got from Ace and the Prince? You can. Yes, you can. Absolutely. For an RP check. Yeah, I'm gonna use it on the three. So that three is now an eight. Yes, Shinobi, I can read. You Plus basically six. said the same thing the book did. Uh, plus six. Say that again. I don't know. The three is an eight. The nine is... Oh. No, that doesn't work either. It does not. Can I, can I add the five to the nine plus the yeah. six? Totally. Yeah. All right, yeah. Nine is me then. Okay. All right. Give a dice. <clears throat> you got a re-roll, Ronk. Am I just re-rolling one of them? Sure. I'll re-roll the three, then. All right. Scroll up. Inspiration. You still fail. Ha-ha-ha. All right. Fail pass, fail pass. Nice. All right. The opposing team. Try to cast out magic at you as you try to cast it back, which you know you're trying not to get all you know deceived by them. You guys are running around the field, you know, the crowd's going wild, and them themselves need to make checks against you as well. Jace fails, Helix fails, <laughs> Carmen fails, Songbird succeeds with a natty 20. Fucking goddamn Songbird, goddamn Songbird. <laughs> Dude. He's fucking killing it. Every single fucking roll. All right, moving on. Now, you guys must make a deception check to try to fake out the opponents with spells or mock spells of your own. 
Yeah, so then I guess like those other rules kind of like made it like work and shit, you know what I mean? Natty 20! Yes, yeah, it's on the enemy team, everybody. Shh. So deception checks? Yes, yeah, deception checks. Ooh, I got a 17 and Big Kim got a 15. Well, no. Big oh, I shouldn't have done up. that. I shouldn't have rolled that. I should have casted the spell. God damn. Is the first one Eddie? Is the 13 Eddie? Yeah, 13 is Eddie. The 2 is me, which is actually a 0. Damn. God damn. All right. And uh, you succeed, Felix. Big Kim fails. All right. Now these are the spells they cast at you. Yeah, so their deception. Jace fails. Helix succeeds with a 19. Uh, Carmen fails. Songbird fails. Dang. Dang. Moving into phase three, the last bit of the first round. Each participant, now that you've all moved close to the tower, you've gotten in... You must make a perception check to catch a stealthy opponent trying to sneak off with your mascot. You must stop them. Uh, I got a six and Big Kim got a 17. Nice, Big Kim. That's a 16 and a 19 for me. Nice, wrong. Now, for them, same thing. Natty 20 from Jace. Yeah, 13 from Helix, 18 from Carmen, and a 2 from Songbird. Alright, last one of the first phases. You must make an athletics check to rest and whiff their mascot away from the opponents and bring it back to your own. You're all running back across the field. I feel like... If I could, I would rewrite this game completely. If this was me making this shit and creating it, yo, shout out wizards. There's a way better way to do this. Now it would take twice as long, but it could be pretty freaking sick, dude. This shit has potential. This little thing you have written here, not great. Not great. I give it like a two out of 10, all right? I would actually yeah. like to cast a spell on this go around. It is the last go round. So if you want to cast a spell to do if this round, then we're going to like reset, right? So if you want to do that, it might not do nothing for you. Unless it's a fun Give idea. A dice. Well, I was just going to cast Entanglement again on the other team so they have disadvantage on their ah, fucking yeah. finally. On their rolls. Okay. That works. Hey! A good Natty 20. All right, Entanglement. You do that so they have disadvantage. But roll for Eddie. Fails. Sad boy. All right. Entang who do you want to entangle, Ronk? I um, want to entangle... I can only do one of them, right? Yeah. I want to entangle Helix again. All right. Chase first. He's got a 15, he fails. Helix, at disadvantage, gets an 11 or a four. Takes the four. Moving on to Carmen. Nine, fails. Songbird, with a 12, fails. All four of them fail. This ends the first round. All right. Let me tally up the points here. You win the first round with 10 points. And the brunch team. In the first round with six. Nice. Yeah, you're ahead by four points. Wait, right. who's winning right now? They are? You yeah. are. By four uh, points. A good skelly or bad skelly? Why does everybody keep talking about a skeleton, dude? This is freaking me out. Why are you guys scaring me, dude? That's not cool. What skeleton? What are you talking? Charles isn't even there. That's a guitar and a purple light. 
What are you talking about? I've, Look. I've been looking for it, and to be honest, I haven't seen it, so I have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. What the fuck about. are y'all talking about? That's cr There's a gourd. I have. That's a pumpkin. All right? That's a gourd. That's a pumpkin I have right there. What are you talking about? Other side. Other what? This is the side of the room? Y'all can't see that side of the room. You know what? You guys are crazy. You guys are all mad. You're going fucking crazy. <sighs> Starting over, you guys line up at the beginning of the field. <laughs> all four of you. I want to play it a little bit my way now, okay? The next person to get a mascot and bring it back to the other side of the field gets 10 points! This is the Allen Professor, right? You guys all line up at the beginning of the field. <laughs> Roll me initiative. I am marred by life. Marred by life. Oh, Jesus. I was rolling for their whole team, and they got a natty 20, so they're first. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yep. Unless oh, no, chat wants to change that. Turkey I got nerd. A dirty 20. What are you talking about? Because a fracking scary skeleton. Give the right. dice. This is my right. What are you talking about? I did get a reroll. I thought I would. All right, Otis. All right. 11! Okay, Ronk, you and Eddie are first. Here we are on the field. Wait, is You can do any or... kinds of... It's you and Eddie together. All right? You and I Eddie together. First, so I rolled an 18. Oh, I was, looking at, I was looking at your 12. So you and Kim well, together. Well, the 12 was for Kim, nah, I nah, guess. Nah, nah, nah. I... Fuck that. You and Kim together. You're on the field. You could do movement to go forward 30 feet. We're going to say the tower is 60 feet away, or you can cast a, a fucking spell to stop the opponent from doing the same thing. What do you do? Uh, We're doing it my way now. Can yes. I do split movement with lower casting spell? You can, yes, absolutely. That's cool. I'm cool with like, that. Like, go 15 yeah. feet and then cast, cast, like, fog cloud on their side. So it's yeah. all like foggy and hard well, to see. It's supposed to be difficult terrain already. Um, so you could go 15 feet and then do that. Yes. Okay. So it's now they're in terrain, you say. difficult terrain and now they yeah. can't see. Okay. Now they can't see. They're having a hard time seeing. Fog cloud. Where do you direct it? And forward, Ooh. behind you, around your tower, around a small area in the center. Where do you put this fog cloud? So many uh, natties for our kind and benevolent DM. It's been a while. Thanks, Otis. Cheers. I place it right on the tower. Your tower or theirs? Their tower. Okay. What's the area of effect on that? Uh, a 20 foot sphere. Okay. All right. You move 15 feet forward. You got. 25 more to go before you can reach that side of the tower. It's about 40 feet away from where you are. What does Big Kim do? Uh, Big Kim... I guess moves uh, 30 feet? Can't. Difficult as far terrain. As possible. She can do 15. No, only yeah. 15. Yeah. Uh, only goes 15. And then... Uh, what's, uh, what's an easy minor spell... Uh, she's going to do a uh, minor illusion and minor illusion a different tower slightly off to the left. <laughs> nice, dude. I love that. Nice, dude. That's awesome. Okay, Ronk, they got an 11, so you and Eddie are next. What do you do? For a well, nice uh, massage? I'm going to go ahead and uh, cast... Actually, do this too. Forgot Plant that. growth. Yeah. 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 This spell channels vitality into plants with a specific area, within a specific area. There are two possible uses for the spell, granting either immediate or long-term benefits. If you cast this using one action, choose a point within range. All normal plants in a hundred-foot radius centered on that point become thick and overgrown. A creature moving through the area must spend four feet of movement for every one foot one foot it moves. It's like double you can difficult terrain. One or more areas of size 
of any size within the spell's area from being affected. You can cast a spell over eight hours. You enrich the land, all plants in a half mile radius centered on a point within range, enriched for one year. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm just gonna overgrow all the plants that uh, the other players are inside that fog cloud. So they're like in a jungle pretty much. Okay, well the fog cloud's actually around your tower um, to stop them being able to see it. And they're in the kind of like center of the field. So you could do it the jungle there or around your tower. It's up to Inspiration. you. Inspiration. I would like to do actually yeah around our tower okay okay i'm interested in how that's gonna play out all right now are you gonna move backwards and defend your tower or are you gonna go forwards towards theirs i'm going to defend okay you move back 15 feet your tower is 25 feet behind you now covered in fog and jungle what does eddie do Eddie's going to cast Levitation and start going up to their tower. Levitation! Eddie casts Levitation on himself, which means he gets to move his full 30 feet movement. He's no longer afflicted by difficult terrain that you are all standing on. So he could fly 30 feet. Now he's only 10 feet away from their tower, and he's levitating. Fuck yeah. Now, the enemy team, first of all, Helix casts Spider Climb on himself, runs over to the wall of the stadium, and runs his 30 feet alongside of the wall. Yeah? And then Jace. Um, dang it, what does Jace do? I don't have it in my head yet. He's going to do something cool. What do you think fucking dickhead Jace would do? Because I kind of know, but I'm like... He throws money into the stands, and bystanders come in and carry him to... He throws money into the stands. Jace would cast Fly. I thought Fly, but Fly is kind of like a cop-out. I don't want Jace to cast Fly. I want Jace to cast Guidance on Carmen San Diego. That's what I want Jace to do. Uh, what the fuck does Guidance do again? We're looking it up. Carmen San Diego cast Guidance on Jace. Yes. He's going to cast Guidance on his friend. Actually, yeah, Carmen's going to cast Guidance on fucking Jace. That's what's going to happen. You can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to one ability check of its choice. Yeah. That's what it's going to do. Casting Guidance. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Um, Songbird is going to move 15 feet forward and then use his bardic inspiration to give one bardic inspiration to Jace. And then Jace moves forward using his athletics to try to move through the difficult terrain and get past all of you, adding the guidance and the bardic inspiration together so he can move through on his athletics to be able to move that fucking space. Here we go. Fuck, that's an eight. Guidance adds a three. Bardic Inspiration adds a one. Fuck him. Well, he moves 15 feet. It's the same. It's a 12. That's a 14. He fails. He moves 15 feet forward. Now, Felix, it's your turn. What do you do? I am going. Can I cast a spell and do movement or just yes. movement? Yeah, yeah, and... totally. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to push. 15 feet closer and then can i see any of the enemy team yes your brother is horizontal from you and 30 feet the other way running along a wall and the other two are just standing in the middle of the field casting magic on jace who's trying to push through the grass uh can i cast color spray on my brother to blind his one eye <laughs> That's fucked up. Uh, what's the range on color spray? We're gonna see. Uh, fifteen feet. I there's no way you're close enough, but you know what? I'll give it to you because that's fucked up. Oh, I don't think I you'll might, ever have the opportunity feet. to do it again. You got something else? Yeah, uh, I could cast sleep. That's got ninety foot range. Oh, the side didn't was for the ads. I'm just trying to joke. Are you drunk, Shinobi? What's going on, bro? <laughs> what the fuck? Um, what'd you say? 
I can cast a sleep. You can't put him to sleep. Mm, sleep have a range. We got to do a check on that shit, huh? It's uh, 90, 90 feet. feet. Yeah. Okay. Um, roll me. 5d8. Let's go. Let's see if you can put your brother to bed. Um, it was the first time in three years I had seen this friend, and he used to be interested in girls. I got a 26. Honestly, it was just me. What? What is going on in chat? What did I miss? <laughs> what did I miss? Uh, 26. Let me see. I must refer now to your brother's character sheet. Hold on. Yes, I've made your brother his own character sheet, because he's an important character. A 26 does not put your brother to sleep. It's pretty close, but it does not put your brother to sleep. Just tell Shinobi is. You know, you're right. You're right. You're right. Go to sleep, little one eye. Yeah. Brain farted. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Okay. Does that end your and turn? Then, yeah. Right. And then Big Kim Slade is going to use Mold Earth to fix all Welcome the rocks to in, the nerd in our lane. You dang nerd. She had powers. She had, she had powers. powers for the Grow she 11 powers. and the Grow 11 powers. E. The Grow 11 are the Grow 11 DS. Nerds! Uh, fucking cheers, GF Powers. Thank you for the 10 months, brother man. Thank you. Cheers, cheers. Thank you. Mars Leather, is this the second back massage I owe you? Are y'all talking about massages and shit? Alright, that's fair. Alright. You're casting rock? What? Go ahead. Uh, Big Kim Slade from Big Kim Slade Gaming is gonna cast Mold Earth. Mm -hmm. Which I believe can like put rocks back. I don't have it on this character sheet, but I know, I know, I believe it's a cantrip. Because like, man. like there's cantrips for like every element on how to like mold men and like how to like choose a portion choose. of dirt or stone that you can see within range and that fits within a five foot cube. You manipulate it in one of the following ways. If you target an area of loose earth, it can uh, excavate it, move it along the ground and deposit five feet away. You cause shapes, colors, or both to appear on the dirt or stone, spelling out words, creating images. If the dirt or stone you target is on the ground, you cause it to become difficult terrain. Alternatively, you can cause the ground to become normal terrain if it is already difficult terrain. <laughs> What's, is there like a range of effectiveness on that? Uh, 30 feet. So we're just gonna lay out the next five 30 foot feet, like... 5 foot cube. Oh. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah, 5 foot cube. So if she does that in front of Felix, could Felix then move, like, 20 feet next turn? Yes. Sure. Okay. She's yeah. gonna do that. Alright. Alright, laying it out for you. Alright, Ronk. Eddie is floating through the air. 10 feet away from the opponent's mascot. You're on the ground defending. What do you guys do? I'm I'm near the tower, correct? Our own tower. Yes, yes you are. And one sec. Uh, Suni said a spooky S for ghoul couch. We need an S to complete the word. So I thought about that. Uh, but we don't want to give you all too many letters. Because we don't want people to get wild and uh, spell out weird shit. You know what I mean? And then we don't want to get in trouble. So, um, But maybe a spooky S for ghoul couch. That's not a bad idea. I'm going to think on that. Good good brainstorming, you guys. You rock. All right. Continue on, Ron. Well, I am already not affected by a difficult terrain thanks to my level six. Um, but I would like to cast Spider Climb on myself and climb halfway up our tower and just kind of defend it at the midpoint. And you're not affected by your jungle difficult terrain because that's a part of your level six. So you could just move straight through it. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. That's pretty cool. Okay. Do you do anything once you're up there? Uh, well, I'm going to very creepily crawl up the side. like, And then I'm going to turn around with my ass facing upward and I'm facing down the tower. And I'm just ready for whoever's coming. All right. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. <laughs> All right. What does Eddie do? Eddie's going to fly closer and try yeah. and get the mask out. He can move 10 feet to the inkling 
get there, and then use 20 feet to move back. Yeah. That's yeah. what I want to happen. Yeah. Eddie's going to be the saving grace of this fucking team, dude. Yeah. Jesus. Okay, he does that, and he's floating through the air. And you see your friends as they see him up there, the enemies. They see him up there like, shit. Now it's their turn. Yeah. Nope. Uh, uh, uh. Um, Felix Filgar rolled five on Sacred Flame. Yeah, I don't know how I did that. <laughs> <laughs> oops, dude. Oops, oops. Um, jeez, no damaging spells makes this difficult. Makes this real difficult. Yeah. Jeez. This is, this is a difficult task. Especially when I didn't make up any of these character sheets beforehand. I'm just thinking in my brain right now. This is this something. You got ideas for spells for these guys, chat? Throw them in the, ch throw them in the chat. Uh, we're going to take a long rest. Night, everyone. Oh, good night, Shinobi. Thanks for coming in, buddy. Sorry for being uh, a little dorky there. Sorry about that. Stunning or sleeping spell to fall out of the air. Ooh, Mars. Yeah, dude. What is Eddie's... What is Eddie's HP? I'm looking up a donkey. Hey, if they hurt, here. if they hurt Eddie, I'm casting guiding bolt. <laughs> oh shit! You go get disqualified, son. Um, his HP is three D eight plus six. We're gonna roll for Eddie's HP. You, can you write this down, Ronk? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. I don't have anything to write with. That is ten. Well, six. That is twenty-two. Do. Yeah. You got 22. I have nothing to write with. All right. Well, we'll just remember it. We'll just remember it. 22. Thank you. Thank you. So we are. He's going to cast sleep on Eddie as he's floating fucking 20 feet up in the air. All right. Songbird is the bard. Bards have sleep, right? I think so. I think so too. I don't know. I never played a bard, really. I got you. Hey, dorky is good, buddy. Ah, that's right. 5d8 for sleep, right, Felix? Yeah. Not unless okay. they're using a six level or a second level spell slot. That's 11. We have to beat 22. That's 21. That's 22. Eddie falls from the sky. <sighs> falls down, still with the inkling in his mouth, 20 feet moved away from the tower, sleeping. He's like, oh, it's not me. And in the morning, falls asleep. Then, Jace moves 15 feet closer through the difficult terrain, gets to the jungle, looks up at you on the tower. Yeah. Felix, your brother Helix, moves all the way around the wall, 30 feet, gets behind your tower, and jumps off, and looks straight up. Both of them now on both sides of your tower, ready to attack. The last person, Carmen, he casts resistance on himself, and then moves towards 15 feet towards Eddie. He's only got five feet distance away from him. Now, it's Felix, it's your turn. How close am I to Eddie? Probably pretty close. You've been moving this whole time, right? You did difficult terrain. You went 15 feet forward, so you're also five feet from him. Okay. Yeah. And the five feet that's in front of me is not difficult terrain. It's not, because of the spell from Big Kim. The sleeper awakens as soon as they take damage. Oh, thank you, Certifiable. Appreciate you. So Eddie's actually awake now, but he has taken eight damage. But he's awake. What do you do, Felix? Convention over. Sadly, um, back home. Hi, Scott. I would Eddie. like to go they haven't to moved Eddie. Yet. Okay. So I'm going to step five feet towards Eddie, grab the inkling out of his mouth, move okay. back closer to my tower by ten feet, 
And then... You said Jace is right there? Uh, Carmen is. In Carmen? Songbird. Yeah. Nice. Uh, 15 foot cone away from me. I'm gonna start with uh, uh, Songbird, because Songbird's been killing it. And uh, I get going to roll 6d10 to try and beat their HP. And if I do, they're blinded. Welcome to Ooh. the nerd herd. Blinding you light. dang nerd. Toss on. on. Choose underscore un underscore del underscore armg. I'm in dire need of 100 barrels of mead. 100 barrels of mead! Uh, I'm gonna need 100 beers. I'm gonna need 100 I'm gonna need beers. beers. So, Grandpa's right, I, I, I need a new drink. I need yeah. 100 beers. I need 100 beers. Cheers, fucking Tassan. Thank you, brother. Cheers, man. Cheers! Far to sleep Saturday night into this morning. Jesus, Scott. Good luck, brother. That's wild. Okay. Roll it. Let's see if you beat their HP. I'm putting both of them at about 30. So I got 35. All right, they're both so, blinded. Uh, no, it would only blind one of them. Okay. And uh, it, like, say if I, it's kind of like how sleep works. If I make enough over both their HPs, then they both would be blinded. But only, oh. only Songbird is blinded. Okay, Songbird is blinded. Now you have five feet of movement left. You gonna use it? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep pushing backwards. Okay. Alright, so you're five feet back towards yours. There's like a center line, you're five feet towards yours, you're 35 feet away. I mean, Odie was uh, making sure that uh, uh, Jace hadn't moved through your jungle yet. He had not. He's standing right in front of it. He has not moved through the jungle yet. Neither of them have. They're both standing there looking at this fucking jungle. Looking up at the tower. Yeah. Alright, what about Big Kim? Uh... Trying to find cantrips that don't do damage. Right. Is Catch Crash is fun. Catch Crash is fun. You want Ronk to go first? We'll come back to you? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Ronk? Well, here's what, what I'm going to do. Or Eddie do. I'm up there on the tower. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and cast Plant Growth once again. Now, I want to remind you that... Felix has to put your mascot back on that tower. Or you do. Because <laughs> you can move through those plants. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I know. I. That's okay. why I'm doing it. How much does an inkling weigh? I don't know. I'm going to look it up. But basically what I want to have happen is right behind me. Remember, I'm facing down on the tower like I'm looking at the ground. Yeah. Right at my ass, I want to spawn a giant mushroom cat on the tower. <laughs> okay. So it's like it's like a fucking overhang. And it's like if you're crawling up the tower, it's impossible to get like I mean, you could pry, I guess, hanging from it and swinging over, but it's just that much more difficult. Okay. To get past the midway point of the tower. All right. And I'm gonna be like, oh, nice, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. All right, um, an inkling. I'm looking how much it weighs. Now, what do you do with your movement? And again, I want to say you're the only one that can move through these plants well. Um, Felix has to put the other team's mascot on your tower to score that point. I'm gonna go to the other side of the mushroom that I just created. Okay. Hop around so it, so now, now you're like, you're on top? Yeah, I'm on top of the mushroom. Okay. Um, an inkling is a tiny ooze, so, and the worm is tiny as well, so they're both very tiny. Very tiny, little tiny little things. Yeah. Okay, Felix, do you know what Big Kim does yet? Um. Dancing lights, Felix, is what Galatia says. Gust. Some That's kind of flight was, spell. I, yeah. You do Can some I, kind of flight spell. Movement. Uh, the movement that actually I'm going to use is... Yeah, flight uh, bounce order. Uh, long strider. Oh, no, I have to touch. All right. I'm a, Big Kim's going to move towards Felix and then cast uh, jump on Felix. 
jump. Which All you have to do way. is get within 30 feet of me. Just saying. And uh, jump is uh, you touch a creature, the creature's jump distance is tripled until the end of the spells, which is a minute, which gives it enough time to come back around Six the Six rounds? Yeah. Okay, lastly, Eddie. What does Eddie do? He's 10 feet behind Felix. Felix is right outside 30 feet of you. What do you do? Mm, isn't he still asleep? Doesn't he have to no, make a he, cocktail? No, he weren't paying attention. Shame. He took um, 2d6 damage when he fell, so it actually woke him up. Yeah. Um, Mage hand. Yeah, that's why I was saying 30 feet. All you have to do is get within 30 feet of me, and I can mage hand the, the shit up to me. Yeah. Okay, well, what does um, Eddie do? Eddie is going to cast Levitate on himself once again and start making his way back over to our tower. Okay, so he's going to go up. It's going to go over Felix 10 feet and then 20 feet towards you. He's about 10 feet away from you floating. Like, he's right above where that 10-foot, 20-foot radius, where that 10-foot starts for the jungle. Mm -hmm. Now, it's the enemy's turn. They have to get through the jungle. So, your brother, Helix, not knowing what he's up against, goes in, pushes all the way through the jungle, only makes it 10 feet just to touch the bottom of the tower. He can't do anything else. Jace looks back at uh, his buddy Carmen, who's moved 15 feet towards him already. He's about 25 feet away. And as well as you. Um, oh, you can't jump. You have to touch someone to cast jump on them, don't you? Didn't you just say that? Mm, yep, I was sure fucking did. Jump this just... whole time. Dang. And you know what? Long Strider is the same way. Uh, what else I got? Jeez. I was gonna do jump. Fuck. If you jump straight up, you're gonna hit a mushroom. That's true. It's true. He's 10 feet away, right? 10 feet out. Um. Uh. That's not what I want. That's not what I want at all. Yo, it's loading so low, too. It's like the slowest loading thing. This is intense. So what do you think? Is the book's way better or is my way better? Uh, I would definitely have to say yours is twice as long, if not three times. Yeah. Yeah. We should have taken a break there 20 minutes ago, huh? Yeah, you blew right through it. I yeah. say that we just uh, tough it out for the next 35 minutes and just try to finish this fucking mage tower game. Or, yeah. or did this mage tower game yeah. totally blow, totally blow our uh, time today? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, he can't do anything. So he just moves 15 feet closer. Yeah. Jace looks back at him fucking mad. And Songbird blindly wanders around to the wall. Goes horizontal. Now, Felix, it's your turn. What do you do? So our tower is a jungle mess with the fog and Ronk's in there somewhere. Ronk is on the top. I'm just trying... I'm just trying to get Bronx to is on the, the top. tower. There's a tower straight down, 10 foot radius around. It's like 20 feet. All right. All the way around, there's jungle, and your fog is still there, right? Ronk is on the top, like looking at you. Jace is standing there going, What the fuck? And you're and like, that's How far from me? Uh, right on the edge of 30 feet. Right on the edge of 30 feet. And. Didn't we figure out that jump uh, feet is equal to your strength score, correct? Yes. Yes. So, Long jump. So, you get a running start. Um, let me look it up. Long jump 5e. Y'all can see I'm searching it. Um, jump calculator. Your long jump is... 10 feet horizontally. Your high jump is 3 feet off the ground. What is your strength score? 14. How tall are you? 
Uh, five... Six? Your long jump is 14 feet. Your high jump is five. You can reach up and grab something that is 13.2 feet off the ground. So, now, with jump being casted on me, I can jump up to 42 feet? With a running start, your long jump is 7, and your high jump is 2.5. So, jump doubles your jump height, right? Triples. Triples. Yeah, so your long uh, jump is long as fuck. Jump distance, by the way. Jump dis distance. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you do a running start... Your long jump is 7 feet horizontally. Your high jump is 2.5 feet off the ground. Um, which, without a running start. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so three times. That is, yeah, 42 feet long jump. Um, or 15 feet up. And Ronk yeah, can I'm... do mage hand. We can do, like, a duo thing. You could jump, and then he could do mage hand and grab it. I'll take that. Well, then I'm gonna long jump. I, I, it, of course, it's gonna like be like two steps and then jump. So it's like, huh. yeah. And then Ronk, you can cast Mage Hand at the same time to get that and grab the mascot. Yeah, and then bring it back. Duo team, like you guys' initiative is close enough that I'll totally take it. Right? Um, I will, for the sake of the game and for the sake of time. I think it's it's wonderful. Yeah. Hey, I see you now, bitch. Get out of here. Um, <laughs> 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 fucking seen his ass, dude. Um, yeah, so you guys get it. You put the mascot down, and the whole crowd goes wild. Ah, super stoked that you guys totally won those freaking 10 points. Jace is down there pissed off. The whole stadium rumbles and then settles back to its default position. The jungle disappears, the fog dissipates, everything else disappears, leaving you wrong standing at the top and all your friends down below. You can see Jace and his whole team stomping their feet, fucking pissed off, already heading back to the Lonka room as the whole team is going, the whole crowd is going wild. <sighs> and then the Owlin Professor Echo Hooters is like, Activate. Well, I can't believe it, but somehow the Breakfast Club won. Anyways, give it up for the Breakfast Club. <laughs> They're all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, now, we are going to take a quick little five-minute break. We did run over, but we're going to take five. We're going to come back. We're going to finish off tonight. As you guys and the rest of your group are heading back to the locker room to clean up and get your reward. Yeah. We're going to take five. Um, wait, the professor wasn't even in your corner? That's dumb. Well, Professor Hooters didn't think that they would win. How's that dumb? Yeah. Also, we don't trust Professor Hooters because Professor Hooters is shady. Is she? I think so. Maybe. Be. I'm Candy Corn! Yeah. Quick! Do a victory pose! Go! Hello, everybody! What the fuck is that? Why is that? Oh, okay, that was weird. Hello, everybody! What's going on? I'm Turkey, your lovely dungeon master. Thank you all so much for joining us. And hey, what's up, Big Jam? How the fuck you doing? How you doing, yeah. man? Hey, fuck hey. off. What? That's so rude of you to uh. say, Big Jam. Fuck you too, Big Jam, you son of a bitch. Now, nah, welcome in, Pyro Club. Um, love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Hobbies for Happiness. What's up? I'm Dungeon Master Turkey. I'm joined here, of course, with Connor and Fishy. Our two lovely players and Grouch Cats crew members. This is episode 11 of Drunks and Dragons, which is our full costume chat involved comedy D&D show, which is high energy and a lot of chaos. But tonight's actually been kind of chill. And we're also in Ghoul Couch, which means we're celebrating fucking Halloween. Why is the music so loud? This is bullshit. Um, we normally do a little bit of a recap at this point, which I guess we could do a little quick one. Felix, you want to do a quick recap for everybody? Because some folks just joined. Just about what the fuck just happened, maybe? 
Uh, what the fuck just happened? Quick recap. So there we are. We've been waiting all semester to do this fucking mage tower conflict and stuff, which was a lot of fun doing it Turkey's way, but compared to the book, which was just all skill checks added up and then whoever had the greater one, um, Turkey, Turkey's way was more of an encounter and kind of more of a battle. It was a lot of fun because it taught us how to use our spells that don't do damaging in creative ways. And we succeeded and we won the Mage Tower game, so we pissed off the other team. And uh, now we're here. Yeah. What's up? Now we're, Welcome now back we're to Dungeons and Dragons. Jeez. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us and fucking being awesome. Uh, window, window. There we go. Nice. Nice. It's open now. Oh, and it's frozen. Oh, word has been banned. Maybe it's D and D Beyond that's freezing my shit. Hmm. Thoughts. Thoughts. I have thoughts. Fuck. The word fuck has been banned. Everybody. Thanks, Jen. Cheers and fuck you. Hmm. Cheers. Aloha. Yo, what's up, dude? Um. Fuck. All right. So we continue now. As you guys just won the Mage Tower game, you succeeded against your opponents. You frickin' disrespected your brother. You got one up on Jace, you did great, and made Carmen feel like shit, and you even got Songbird a little bit of involved, which you know that he probably appreciates. You too, Big Kim Slade from Big Kim Slade Gaming, and of course, Eddie the Donkey succeeded as the Breakfast Club. You guys managed to capture the other team's mascot and score yourself 10 points, putting you at a total of 20 versus the other team's six. Congratulations. After, of course, Professor Hooters, the Owlin Professor, announced to the crowd who won. The whole crowd cheered. You guys bowed. They threw out flowers and things. It was a big old lovely time. I love that you both just bowed at the same time. Even though Discord lag and shit, somehow that still happened. Wait, I don't have Twitch open. I wanted to make that a moment. Fuck! Fuck! Shit! I can't. Somebody clip that, please. Um, <clears throat> you guys head back into the locker room. As you guys are heading back into the locker room, of course, Eddie the Donkey's talking to you and he's like... Well, geez, I just had the most fun I think I've ever had. I I fell on my face and I floated and it was still fun. So thank you guys for including me in this adventure. Oh, you're welcome, Eddie. Anytime. Thanks. We need to hang out some more. Make some waffles. We do, man. Cool. Did you like those waffles I made this morning? They were delicious. Love. Yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. All right, that's good. I'm learning still. I'm not much of a cook, you know. I... Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, um, of course, you guys walk back. And Big Kim mumbles to herself, reading through the book, discussing the rules. She's like, that's not normally how I thought the game would go. But it's okay, because I'm Big Kim from Big Kim Slade Gaming. And eventually, you guys make it back into the locker room. And again, before... <laughs> spoilers... This locker room was very nice, amazing, immaculate. I'm candy corn! Put together amazingly. And the locker room had a couple of lockers that you guys were fond of, a nice little table, everything like that. As you walk inside, all of the candles are out. The fire is out. It's dark in here. You walk inside and pull out your flint and steel and start lighting up the candles. And as you do, something becomes very apparent very fast. All of your lockers have been completely trashed. All the things you had in there. Ronk, your cooking utensils, your lovely drawings. It has all been thrown out. All of your books, your uniforms, everything. Psh, trashed. Felix, your cat box has been dumped out in there. Your little fish bones have been gone through. Everything trashed yeah. and ripped up and thrown out. What about my half-eaten rat? Even your half-eaten rat is thrown on the ground. What the half-eaten rat? Yeah. It was awful. Motherfuckers. I'm so hungry. Yes. So, both of you investigate maybe what the fuck this is. Roll me investigation. Let's say, uh, 19. 19. 19. All right. You can see that the back door of this locker room is kind of cracked open. Is if someone came, shuffled through all your stuff. It kind of looks like maybe you can gather they were looking for something that you had, that they thought that you had. But maybe you gave it to a certain professor so you didn't end up storing it in the locker, thankfully. Not only is it bribery, but maybe is something bigger than you were, you'd even know. And the back door is left wide open as if they left in a rush. 
as if the game ended sooner than they thought that it was going to. And whatever or whomever this was came, shuffled through your shit, and left. And it looks like nothing that you had in there is missing. Although a pile of hay from Eddie the Donkey and your guys' garbage really might not mean a lot. It means a lot to you, but might not mean a lot to anyone else. Hmm. Maybe we should go check on <clears throat> Professor Woodslop. Maybe. Maybe. But first, you guys get all the lights lit up, you kind of clean up your things and start bagging it up. Mage Tower is over, so you're free to take all of these things home, as well as this was the last day of the semester, so you're free to take all this shit home with you. So you put all your things in your backpack, and uh, before you manage to leave, Professor Hooters arrives. And she's like, hello, boys. And Donkey. And Big Kim, um, it's good to see you. Congrats on winning today. Honestly, I didn't think you were going to pull that one off. Uh, I thought that the other team was just much more skilled than you are. They just seem more put together. So I'm uh, kind of surprised, honestly. Uh, good job, Anya, for pulling that off. Anyways, all four of you will be receiving 400 gold pieces. Just go to the Biblioplex and speak to Slurp, and he will give you your payouts. Um, he's a very nice person. I don't know if you've met him before, but he handles a lot of the Biblioplex finances. So just go there sometime before the semester's over. It's the last day. Oops, you better go today. Um, and receive your earnings of 400 gold. And, uh, other than that, I'll see you around. Uh, the mess in here, huh? Someone go through your stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't Let's don't worry work. about it though. We got it handled. Okay. Set back door open. The other team being sore about losing. Oh uh, yeah. Maybe that's that's uh, yeah. That's what it is. Don't look into it too much. It was probably just them. They somehow got here before you. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. Then she leaves. Now. This kind of ends your little bit of a day. This ends your little bit of the semester. This pretty much ends it right here. This semester here is officially over. Of course, I'm assuming you guys are gonna go today to collect your earnings. You get fucking 400 gold to be able to spend, which is a big amount, a chunk of change. And um, Eddie doesn't really have anything to spend gold on. So he gives it all to you, Ronk. You get 800 gold pieces um, for oh. helping to free him from his curse. And he thinks that you're the one that did it. Now, I would also say that once word gets out about your winning, uh, you guys are once again celebrated as heroes right here on campus. So over the course of this small little summer that you guys are having, it's about three to four weeks long, you guys are having a little summer here in between semesters. There are parties thrown in your honor. There are celebrations. There are teachers who offer to help you with extra studies. There are all different kinds of people approaching you and trying to talk to you about counseling you or being more a part of what you do and who you are. And Ronk, you already have a counselor, being Jerome, the master chef, Guyome. But Felix, you still don't have one. You're a freelancer. So there's a lot of nah, counselors right, and people it's trying to... Time. Yeah, they're trying to get your attention. They, they want to be your counselor. They want to be the person who counseled the next big hero. So, you have some time to think on who you want to be that counselor. Yes. Um, so, for now, you guys can bask in your achievements. And if there's anything you want to do this here summer or anything like that before the next semester starts, please feel free to let me know. What are you, what are you going to do? I'm gonna, I, I want to go. Rock first. Go. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tune to this uh, magical spoon that Guy home gave me. Nice. Uh, I'm also going to yeah. spend some more time with him in the kitchen. Okay. Secretly, of course. Nobody knows. Only me. Okay. Um, the more time you spend with him, the more relationship points you get with him. And even though he's a counselor, you can still get boons and banes from being in with Guy Ohm, if that's who you want to kind of like be in with and do things with. Additionally, I want to remind you that here on our campaign, we are doing quick attunement. So you could just spend one action to attune to something. You don't actually have to spend a rest to do so. All right? Oh, okay, remind you great. Yeah. Okay. Felix? Uh, 
I, I would like to see if uh, Cherry is doing anything for this uh, this summer vacation. Okay. Maybe you meet her at a party. You hear about a party she's going to, even though the party's being thrown in your honor. And you try to, like, go and show up and, you know, trying to get all sweet on her or something. I was thinking more of, like, we were going to go to Bone Smasher Amusement Park. That's far. You could do that. You I mean, I just got 400 go gold. Park. You did just get 400 gold. And you do know... I'm going uh, to fucking Bone Smasher Amusement Park. I'm going to do... You just won the Mage Tower game. What are you doing? Hell <laughs> yeah! We're I'm going, going to the Bone <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, you also do know Eddie, who's literally a donkey that travels people places. Yeah, and he's your fucking it, friend. It, it, so he can help you with, with travels. You could plan it up yeah. with Cherry. Ronk, do you want to go on this adventure with him during summer? No, I need to master my craft. Okay. Just stay in the kitchen. All right. Secretly. He doesn't um, know that. I want you to roll me 1d4, Felix. This will determine how many hundreds of golds you spend on this adventure throughout the summer. 200? That's pretty 200. good. Yeah. I want it to be like a solid experience. Don't worry. I'll come back with pictures. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I also want you to come back with a story of something or somehow whatever happened at freaking Bone Smasher theme park, which if you guys don't know is canon in our world... There is a barbarian tribe called the Bone Smashers, and they got invested in from the king to actually create a theme park out of bones. So there is a barbarian theme park called Bone Smasher Theme Park on its own island in our world. It's actually on our fucking map and everything. Um, let me show you. Map, map, I'm the map, I'm the map. If we grab our map here and then we scroll over here to the right side, you see that little skull right next to Bone Smasher Island? That skull... Is Bone Smasher theme park. So that's where that is located. Oh, yeah. Prime subscription. Romance her well. It's all coming together. Oh, shit, dude. Almost fucking uh, two Jesus years, Coy dude. Just resubbed for 24 months. That oh, is shit, two years. Two years. <laughs> what? <laughs> that is two years. That, that's two Come years, zombie. Cheers to two years, brother. Can't fucking believe that shit. Look, two months streak, too. Cheers, zombie. Thanks, man. Mm hmm. Oh, it says 23 for you? Well, shame on that thing. Shame on it. Um, perception on evidence. Bad, bad professor, says Odie. Oh, geez. I didn't read any chat for a minute. Um, awesome. Go the park. Fuck yeah. Do that long date. That's right. Romance her well. That's it. That's it. Okay, so um, you can advance. In the book, it actually says you can advance relationships past being friendly being you can be rivals or you can be friends and you can actually advance relationships past that for stronger relationships which do give you stronger boons now i would like to ask you though before we do that felix would you just like to get the second point with her to make her a real good friend or would you like to bring it past that uh i'd like to i, I would like to be attempting to bring it past that okay so i would maybe be even willing to say i'll take one point and then when we come back from our trip, we can roll for another point. Well, we don't have to roll, but you will have to tell a story of maybe what you guys experienced to what kind of like made you guys have that stronger bond, right? And then I'll let you know if you have any extra boons or anything like that from having a stronger boon bond with her. And I think you do, but I want to double check in this fucking book before I get into any of that shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I am not too. broken. I am not broken. broken. Yeah. Fuck it. We're all broken. We're all okay, boys and girls. It was a fantastic bout tonight. Um, that spoon, I think, is amazing. <laughs> um, everything yeah. is great. We're going to talk a little bit about all that stuff. We're going to come back here in 10 minutes for our breakdown. That's right. Um, but first, we're going to do some final thumbnail poses for tonight, uh, which means... You guys in chat can throw out random poses, and then these guys will pose as those things, and you can screenshot them, and then post them in the Discord, or keep them for yourselves, and make memes out of them. And if you do make any memes and post them on social media, please make sure to tag us so we can share them and have a good laugh. Or make sure to post them in the Discord so we can also have a good old fucking laugh. Um, but we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about those things. Gala says, boss battle? What you mean boss battle? What you talking about? <laughs> You thought, huh? We'll see. So, uh, yeah, we're doing thumbnail poses. 
I don't know what you mean by boss battle, though. Honestly, I have no idea. What do you guys think? What are you thinking? I don't know. You know? But I do know one thing. Especially yeah. from the exam today. It's the wheel of woes. The wheel of woes. The wheel of woes. I'm really mad because he told me how I could do it, but I don't have the option to, which makes me realize I need to update some shit because I'm angry about it. Okay. Cool. That. Oh, um, also, I don't know if you put the connection together, but the exam from today was actually similar to the title of that book. And that's why he gave you the extra points because of the title. You have any idea what I'm talking about? We'll talk about that more during yeah. the breakdown. Yeah, we totally will. All right, just give me a wild pose like, ah, we're on a ride at Disneyland. Ah! All right, I hope someone screenshotted that. Um, we'll be right back in five minutes, everybody. Don't go anywhere. I know this was quick, but we're trying to keep on our schedule. So these guys got to get out of costume and everything. We'll be right back. All right. 